Yeah, at about 25 past 12 this morning, uh, we've had a what we believe to be an electrical fault in the main circuit board of the Mark units. This has actually exploded, creating a fire to go up to the conduit, electrical conduit, and it's gone through um, four levels. The main fires then hit Shooters Nightclub, um, eventually resulting in the ceiling collapsing at the front entry. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we had approximately 1,000 people in there and about 500 other people in the immediate area, so we've had to ev evacuate them. Uh, with the security on scene and also the police, we've managed to get them out within about five minutes and no injuries. You guys trying for this sort of thing? Well, I, I guess it just comes as um, a, a common, common nature because it's an emergent situation and that's, I suppose, part of our job. Man, I need you to tell me how lucky you people were last night, because this could have been deadly. It could have been. We've had toxic black smoke go through the premise and also down the street. So if it wasn't for the quick action of the security and the police on scene, um, we could be looking at a coroner's court instead. So we're extremely lucky that we didn't have a tragedy. Can you tell me about the panic? There would have been a bit of that. Um, there wasn't actually initial panic, because we, we didn't have the uh, fire per se. That actually came later on. And uh, people just came out and they were cheering and probably weren't really aware of what was going on. Because there were so many, um, it was, they were all yelling and, and screaming, so they didn't get the message, they just knew they had to be out of the clubs. You were telling me before about the schoolers, what about the emergency service, because they were in danger as well? Yeah, absolutely. We had eight appliances from uh, the fire brigade and also four QAS, and they've had to go in and render the scene safe and also do our evacuation and check for any people that were left in there. What about those up in their apartments? Yeah, we've evacuated 58 residents out of there and they're now at a community sports centre at Southport um, with a turn at com accommodation because at present time we're unable to get them back there. Uh, there's no power to the unit block at the present time. So that's dead at the moment, really? Yes, absolutely, yeah, due to the amount of damage. Tell me about their fate. I've been seeing people pile on the buses this morning, people wearing towels. Yeah, we've uh, put 58, we've activated our local disaster management group and they've set up a uh, community centre there for the evacuees and what we'll do now is we've got all their names, we'll contact our next to Ken and the like and try and seek a turn to accommodation there but we'll um, look after them until that time. That fire could have gone up, I mean you said it went down if you shoot a night and caused the roof to collapse. Right, it commenced on level one and has gone, the smoke and the actual electrical damage has gone up to level four. So it's actually travelled up to that point. Has that then infiltrated their room? Uh, we were lucky. Anything above level five had minimal smoke damage, but everything below, it was just a thick, toxic smoke. Tell me how lucky people were in their rooms. Was that in the air conditioning ducts? Yes, that's right. That's how it was disseminated. We believe it was disseminated through the air conditioning and also the electrical conduits. So um, we had a number of schoolies in there as well, and they were all evacuated, and they've been placed in turn accommodation as well. So we're just extremely lucky that there's, there's been no injury or deaths. I get the feeling that if this was overseas, perhaps Phuket, Thailand, somewhere, we could have been looking at mass fatalities. Yeah, it could have been, but um, we're, we're quite lucky here. Well done. Uh, perfect, mate. Thank you very much.